A lot of people think that the door for humanity is closing. 71% say they will not have children because the future is bad. 72% of Americans say that artificial intelligence spells the end. But the reality, of course, is it's always a mixed bag with technology. Every technology has been used for bad things and for good things. I think the future is better than we think. In the amount of stuff that we have invented in the last five years, especially since COVID, it's mind-boggling. Science fiction is becoming science fact. Kevin Kelly, famous futurist, says we should be optimistic not because our problems are less, but because our capacity to solve them is larger. Marshall McLuhan, some of you may know from the 70s, famous media philosopher, he says it's the framework that changes with each technology and not the picture. If computers have knowledge, what does that mean for us? If a machine can learn, so-called machine learning, deep learning, how does it learn? Bloomberg has an app for the Vision Pro. Yeah. You can dive into data like you were in Minority Report, like this, and throw it over there, and it's like 100x. Very addictive, too addictive for me. But Bloomberg has this, and quite clearly, you're going to wear devices like this, powered by virtual reality and AI, to be 100x as fast, looking at data. Every professional will have an AI assistant of their own in the next three years. Judgment? That's different. It takes time to contemplate. Artificial intelligence is now a general purpose technology. General purpose means used everywhere. Printing press, fire, internet, cloud computing, mobile phone. Computing used to be about web and open source, the smartphone, the cloud. Now computing is all about artificial intelligence. Everything. Forecasts show that we can have a global GDP increase of 17 trillion by productivity derived from AI. That's the promise. <laughs> but really what AI is, is a power tool. And when we use a powerful tool, everything around it changes. Now we're in the age of convergence of humans and machines. If you work for a law, law firm, you're doing diligence on, on the lawsuit, 20 hours of paralegal. Now the machine does it in 14 minutes and the paralegal works on it for an hour. Are you going to build a client for 20 hours? or five hours, or not at all. Remember, the people with the tools will beat the people without the tools. If you have the tool, you can do better. You can resell what you have, the expertise. Cognification, that's basically systems becoming smart. As IBM has said, cognitive computing, <laughs> finally here. Augmentation, which is helping humans getting better. Translation, transcription, that sort of stuff. Virtualization, virtual reality, holograms. And finally, automation. Cognification, we can boost comprehension and visualize data. And that alone is great because it helps us to understand what really goes on. We can anticipate new data in the future. We can allow for smarter and faster connections between the different pools of data and even companies. We can automate commodity tasks. We stick the old business into the transformer and out comes the smart business. Smart energy, smart cities, smart retail, smart accounting, possibly even smart government. Can you imagine that? But this is a process that's been going on for 10 years. I think primarily it's about creating a symbiotic relationship so that I can draw from it when I want to. And we're going to do this in a hundred different ways with virtual reality and holograms and Zoom rooms and spatial computing, Apple's project, mind-boggling. This is their forecast from ARC Investment that by 2030, we can be three, four, five X as effective with paralegal office and admin support work than before. As we find the tools, we find new tasks. We develop new jobs, we create new value, and then people come in to fix the tools. We always think that tech replaces people. The cloud, the mobile phone, social media. We thought social media was gonna be free marketing. Who gets all the money for marketing now? The social media people. So, yes, I'm a little bit worried about people that can't do anything else. So if your job is 90% routine, you are in trouble. The next thing is really exciting, virtualization. That means taking what you do in real life and looking at it through a digital setup. But then when you get home in the evening, sitting with your wife and your kids, you're like, it's so boring because you're not wearing this thing. I think also the good thing is it would be more fun to work. Imagine if all of the drudge work and the routine, if that could fall away, and whoever does not do that won't be there. It's like saying, I'm not going to do digital music like the Beatles. I'm not going to make my music available in digital. If you have a city that you built from scratch today, you would only have self-driving cars. 
it's very important to realize what we're talking about is the automation of knowledge work. Amara's law, Bill Gates' law, says we tend to overestimate the effect on the short run and underestimate on the long run. So in 20 years, that could be true. But what if 40% of my job was automated? Could I then create another part of my job? Or would I just not be there? Yeah, if we're talking about 90%, yeah, you won't be there. Machines, they're all about logic, data, information, zeros and ones. Humans have eight different kinds of intelligence. I only show four here. Social, intellectual, kinesthetic, emotional. Machines only have one. Machines have unlimited computing potential. So we can get them cracking on the numbers and all of the work that we constantly have to do. Machines can't do reasoning, understanding, planning, persistent memory, like what happened last time without being connected to the database, context, causality, awareness, common sense. That's a no-no for machines. Don't give the machines a job that requires this. They won't solve it well. They will just make it up. That's called hallucinations. On this world, remember, machines don't think. They don't have hunches. They don't understand. They don't imagine, and they certainly don't care. Imagination, ethics, empathy, consciousness. Bottom line this, you work like a robot, a robot will take your job. There's no way around that. Right? If you learn like a robot, you'll never have a job. The question is not so much what AI will do to us. That's like we're the victim of whatever it does. Right? But what we want it to do for us. We have to get to the future ahead of our customers and be ready to greet them when they arrive. People still buy Teslas because they think it's the future. <laughs> it's just an amazing narrative. Right? Spend 45 minutes per day in the future. The future isn't about tomorrow. The future is no longer science fiction. The future is not tomorrow. The future is here. Point number one, we need to embrace technology, but not become technology. When you become technology, you are a commodity. Always keep the human in the loop. Even if it costs more money, if it takes longer, this is how we keep control. We have to invest in algorithms, human things, the opposite of algorithms, human skills, human capabilities, and algorithms. It's the handshake that's important between humans and machines.